So I've been playing around with federated unit tests. Um, it's been quite a big pressure point to actually get that capability to work. One of the biggest questions we have with module federation at the moment is how do we actually test it? There's not really a good answer that I've been able to come up with until more or less past couple days. Um, and this pretty much started off with this journey on how do I get uh, Webpack to like build the just files? I need Webpack in control of the require statements instead of something like Babel. So uh, what that ended up with is uh, I create two apps federated cross test and federated test. One of them just has a button in it. The other one is like a full app. Well, not really, but you know, it's got a form and a, and whatever. And I can actually, you know, serve it and boot it and it'll show me a, a small little hello world app with a form. And if I look at the form, I'll notice that the form comes from module federation. So it comes from federated, which is this directory here, it's federated. So I somehow want to be able to test that my form still works or that whatever is still working. How do I test for that? How do I write a unit test? How do I kind of try and harden the code? What kind of patterns could be put in place? Um, Module Federation offers code to be evergreen, or if you use Medusa, that we can version the code, but you still want some way to test the code and actually check if this remote component, even at a certain version, still works with some primitive tests that you might write. So without any further ado, let's look at test. So this is where it happens. Pretty much what I've got is I have this git ignored, bundle test, that's what just actually reads. If I look at my NPM package, you'll see I just have just, just bundle, and it will just look for this. My webpack config, I pretty much wrote a little thing called reunited, which is a little abstraction on the module federation interface for connecting remote to a host. And I pass it where I'm going to resolve this from. So because these are on disk, I'm obviously showing this with them on disk. But if this was in CI, I would use code streaming, and this would be a code streamed target. And I would just have node work like the browser, and in CI or wherever, it would just pull down whatever it needs from, it can come right from GitHub, HTTP, or from some internal firewall, internal store. So I connect federated and fed components, and then if I go in here and look at a test, I just have, you know, expect true to be true, and then I have the federated tests. And so this took a little while. I tested it, or I tried out using, you know, worker pool um, to manage this. Worker pool didn't really do what, uh, well, it worked, but I didn't need to do it. Uh, but I ended up being able to do it just on the process. But what was really cool is I was able to get a suspense renderer going. And that also, maybe by coincidence, but from rendering form up here, it seems that when I run this test down here, my snapshot's complete from running a suspense render on it. Um, and the suspense render will just output HTML. But pretty much I'm going to expect, you know, some snapshots to be generated. So we'll go yarn test. And you can see I'm just using normal uh, federated imports. Uh, they're async, and it's form and button. And uh, you know I'm just pulling them in directly. If I go and look at form, which should be over here, form consumes button. Yep. So it's nested pretty much. Cannot resolve this. But let's see. Sometimes my disk is a little slow and it doesn't pick it up right away. It's usually the cause. Need a better timeout cycle between the two events. Okay. And now pretty much it compiled my test entry point and now Jest is running against it and we'll see that it passed in seven seconds. And we can see here I've got the normal test then nested federation suspense and this is actually what it console logs out so I show that I actually go into if I go into the test I'm actually loading 
Suspense Render, which is a really nice little convention for uh, from this project, which is really great for rendering asynchronously. So this is what I've been using right now, um, and it works really well. So I'm going to try this out with uh, not having to use this renderer, but apparently React Testing Library is a little bit more suspense friendly, and I kind of ran this off Enzyme initially. And while it still works, and if we look at the snapshots that it creates, you know, my snapshot actually contains I am button, even though that's inside the suspense brackets. We can see snapshots work on nested things. Um, and yeah, so this is really great step for module federation, I think. Um, we need an answer to testing. And then the strategy on how I would use this or what I'm thinking of doing with it is have kind of like a crisscross pattern. So basically, if... Um, if I have something that consumes button, like say form, in this example I have form, then what I do is I exposed form because it consumes button. So the theory would be that uh, a team who owns something could, or a team that owns button could write a very basic uh, unit test that where it goes out and it pulls down form uh, directly from its source and it kind of checks that none of its changes have broken anything. And form could do the same thing and whenever it changes or updates it could check with the current latest and see if everything still works and yeah so that would solve distributed testing and distributed code um especially if you kind of had a big ci job or something like that that held it all up you could do it like more intelligent ways like i'm looking at some medusa integrations that'll introduce that but there's even with this you could be up and running and have you know relative confidence that whatever you're consuming or whatever you're vending out isn't about to break somebody else.